This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Ting. All right, it's time to set up our SOX5 proxy. Let's do it. I just got so tall. Yes, let's <laughs> do it. Here, I'm going to show you in Linux first real quick because okay. it's totally easy. Uh, basically, SSH, TAC capital D, and then a port number. I'm going to use 8080. And then a user at your host. And then boom. Wait, then, seriously? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I actually haven't set up key pairs, so it's going to ask me to log in. Mm -hmm. And I'll add that host, and then I'll give it the password, and we'll be all set. But, you know, suffice that's it to say. That's all you do? Well, that's the real basic. In fact, we're going to expand a lot more in Linux here soon when we get into key authorization and maintaining persistence. But, but for the basic but for configuration. Windows, yeah, yeah, that's. That's the gist of it. How is Linux easier than the one that I do in Windows? How is Linux easier? It's always easier. <laughs> Come on, you know that. <laughs> okay, well, this is the one for Windows. You, you download Putty, you open it, and then you go uk.hack5. So you enter in your host name. Yeah, you enter in your host name, port, I'm just going to leave it at 22, yeah, whatever. That's the default. And then I go down here to tunnels, mm -hmm. and I choose, I'm going to choose port 8080 because that sounds good. And then. 127.0.0.1. Mm -hmm. It's my home. And then I hit dynamic and hit add. And then open. And then mine's going to ask for my username and password too. Maybe one day. It will. The network's will. just going a little slow today. The network is slow today. There we go. Okay. Snubsy. And I won't say that part out loud. It's really slow. There it goes. All right. All right. Magically, it, it goes on right, after we, we cut off the webcam. Yeah. So guess what, Darren? Yes. I have no clue what I just did. Yeah, well, let's break it down. I mean, in fact, <laughs> okay. this isn't even the best way to go about it. There's slicker ways, and we're going to be getting into that really? more. But I figured we'd just lay the fundamentals. Yeah, we're, we're going to do this with keys so that you don't have to type your password all the time. Okay. We'll automate it so that it's not some ugly box. And uh, we'll make it services and cool stuff like that. But okay. the technology is basically the same, the way that it's happening right now. Cool. Um, this is just one step of it. Obviously, the next thing is configuring your browsers. Yeah, and didn't we like skip the whole like actual setup of the proxy? Yeah, like, actually, that too? you're right. The server, in this case, was already set up from, uh, I got a yeah. virtual private server at domain.com, and the oh. way that they're set up by default is that they naturally, since they have SSH installed, mm -hmm. will go ahead and accept connections for SOX proxies. Oh, okay, which is so this is just cool. a client. This is this just guy. the client side. Next okay. week, I'll get into how to configure the SSH daemon on Windows and Linux. But uh, you know, for the most part, this though, as the user, is like a good example of how to start getting, you know, using it. I mean, the next thing, okay. obviously, configuring your browser, and we'll get into that in a bit with uh, some cool browser extensions to make that easier. But essentially, what you've done now is, if we say this is your laptop, right? Yes. I'm assuming that's my laptop. That's your laptop, <laughs> right? And so you're on the wireless network here at the uh, at the Hack5 studio. And then we've got this server up here in the cloud. It's our virtual private server because you know we don't want to spend a whole lot of money. And this way, it's really easy, okay. right? And this virtual private server is up in the cloud with the rest of the internet, right? Right. And so what you've done now is you've created this uh, this connection here. I'm gonna start using fun colors. <laughs> yeah. You've created this fun connection here to, to your the internet. virtual private server. Oh, to okay, to the VPS. Got it. And it's inside this tunnel. Oh, oh. And that's what the SSH. That's is. the SSH. Right. That's why in Putty it tells me SSH tunnel. Exactly. So okay. that's the terminology. Is this. Right here is our tunnel. So I'm basically connecting from my computer through a secure tunnel to the VPS, and then the VPS is connecting me to the internet? Right, and so the way that it typically works is with SSH and Putty, you would normally just go ahead and type in the host name or the IP address, yeah. as well um, as well the port's default 22 in this case. And then uh, you'd click OK, log in, you'd be all set, right? And yeah. what that would provide you access to is like the actual command line on that server so that you could administer it. Ah. What you did when you went down into Putty under tunnels and created that dynamic yeah. tunnel is that you um, 
you basically said, hey, I want to be able to, from this virtual private server here now, go out to other websites on the internet. So we'll say like Facebook is over here, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, maybe Twitter is here. Okay, well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so before I actually connected to the VPS, the ddk.hack5.org, yep. um, I had to put in my password before I could connect. Mm -hmm. Couldn't somebody sniff my password and figure out how to get onto the tunnel? Yes, and that's why in the next week we're going to be talking about uh, key-based authentication using symmetric ah, key pairs, okay. and that's going to be able to prevent... Now, SSH inherently is secure, at least uh, in this case we're using SSH uh, version 2. There is a vulnerability in SSH version 1 where you could pretty much... Oh, that's an H. Uh, you <laughs> could pretty much get... The, uh, the password from someone. Okay. Um, that's, we're using version two, and still there's opportunities to fake that stuff, convince the client to go back down to V1 if, if it's yeah. configured incorrectly, or at least in my mind. And um, yes, you could potentially get the password, or you could connect to the wrong server or whatnot. Okay. That's why we're going to do SSH key pairs. Okay, cool. Yeah. And we'll get into that later. Now, dynamic. Um, Earlier when we discussed PuTTY, mm -hmm. you were like, do dynamic. Uh, what's the difference between that, local, and uh, the other one, remote? Remote. My three choices. Sure. So, you know, there's the, um, you've got the opportunity to make a dynamic tunnel as well as a local mm -hmm. or remote. Now, what a remote yeah. would mean is, say there's like uh, the Hack5 IRC, right? So we've got an IRC server over here. and we want to create a uh, connection to this IRC server so that our communications with it are always secure, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so obviously. we go from VPS <laughs> to it, and so what we could do, you know, because because over here, like you know, this now this endpoint is encrypted, yeah. And so now to connect our VPS to the IRC server, what we would do is we would make a remote connection, and then we would specify the IP address of our IRC server here and a port oh. number. In this case, IRC is port 6669. Okay. And we'd, we'd make a port that we connect to it on. We'll make it 6668, whatever you want. And that way, what will happen is when you go to the VPS, you now have a remote link on that port over to your IRC server. Okay, so remote is just for like one specific site or right. server or whatever, port what have you. site, there you go. And then dynamic is for like the entire internet. There you go. Awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. And so I want to be on be, dynamic. And then a local would be another like local resource because it's not just this one virtual private server up in the cloud. There's multiple There's other lots ones. Of them. And so if there were, okay. say, this was the Hack Five office, mm -hmm. I'd be able to, you know, uh, get access to or share resources between those two networks, like your okay. printer and things like that. What about that? Port, the port numbers you were mentioning. Well, that's that's does, like sometimes when you log in, it says you know port twenty two is already filled out, and I'm just like, why port twenty two? Well, the port twenty two thing. Why is eighty eighty? Well, that's a better <laughs> question. The port twenty two is because that's what SSH uses. It, oh, you know, every, everything okay. uses a port, <laughs> and uh, for the most part, and SSH decides to use twenty two. Okay, it's one of the lower ones. Now, uh, the reason that you did eighty eighty is mm -hmm. because you can choose anything between. Uh, 1025, uh, 1025, and 65,536 uh, or 5. I can't remember. I think it's 5. Um, you, you could technically use, you know, lower than... Um, like 1,000? Yeah, you could use 1024 and below, but it's, like, not recommended or it's going to get difficult, like for example on Linux you'd need root access to do it. Oh, I just say okay. use anything between these and you're going to be fine. Because it's easier. Yeah. Okay. And Those uh, are just the magic numbers that you put in and <laughs> make a port out into the wilderness. Right, and so what you're <laughs> doing though when you're creating that tunnel is that you are you specified 127.0.0.1. I've seen that number before on those shirts. That says there's no place like one two seven o o one or uh, or an IP version five colon colon one, but yes. that's a that's a different <laughs> discussion. Um, yes, yeah, so that is what's known as local host. So your machine is that my machine? That's your machine. So that's your machine computer. typically okay. has like a couple of interfaces: uh, WLAN, 
zero, it's going to be called something different in Windows. But on the Linux side, this is your wireless LAN. Right. You'll have yeah. your ETH e zero. TH zero. That's yeah. your wired Ethernet port. Yeah. Um, you'll also have low on Linux or on Windows, I forget what it's called, but basically these three interface, your Wi-Fi, okay. your Ethernet, and your local. And that local here, that's... Is that number? That's the local. Oh, okay. So it's a loop back. So basically you could run a web server on your machine yeah. and then you could go to web... In fact, that's how I develop like PHP, you know? I run oh. a web server on my machine. Yeah. I go to HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 and then I see the web server that I'm running. And I'm not okay. I don't have to share it with anybody else but by myself. And that way I can develop stuff. Yeah. You know, it's running services locally. Okay, I think I, I, I'm getting it now. <laughs> well, what this is, is when it. you're creating this connection here at 127.0.0.1, port 8080, mm -hmm. what you're making is basically an alias. Uh, what you're saying is... So you're giving your computer a nickname? Well, it's not necessarily a nickname as much as it's now kind of like a route. So, for example, we've got like on your computer, yeah, your web browser with your cool little dots, and then you get some tabs over here, and you're like, <laughs> hey, search for something. Come on. And it's okay. like uh, your web browser, you can specify a SOX5 proxy in it. It is SOX5 compliant. Lots right. of different programs are. And so you can say, hey, web browser, I want you to use a proxy. And it's like, oh, what's the address of the proxy? And you say, it's me. Oh, it's okay. my local host. So this is why, even though I'm using PuTTY to start up the connection to the VPS uh, uh, proxy, mm -hmm. I also have to go into my browser and set it up via the browser, else the browser is not going to know any difference. Right. Because and it's just going to try to connect to the internet yeah, like there's, it normally there's does. There's two parts to your connection to that virtual private server. Okay. There's, in this case, ddk.hack5.org was the host name. And that's up here in the cloud, right? That's the external facing or, right. or on the cloud kind of thing, right? And then there, you, it's also your 127.0.0.1 on port 8080. So mm -hmm. this one is 22. This one is 8080. Ah. And so what you're doing now is you're making a relationship between these two things. So now you could have multiple SSH tunnels to various servers around oh, the world. Oh, and I could like switch between them or have like a specific one to go to a specific site. A absolutely. Awesome. Uh, you don't have to use 8080. It's just that's the port that gets abused for everything. Yeah. I like to use 27015 because it reminds me of Counter-Strike. Ah. But regardless, <laughs> you, you know, this virtual private server is here in uh, the United States. And there's that and there and then Hawaii it's a great can US. come to <laughs> and then there's Alaska. Right? It's a terrible Alaska. Okay, so um, when I put that number into PuTTY, I put it under destination. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't the internet be my destination? Well, that's the beautiful thing, is the internet is your destination through this. So wh what will happen here is when you go, you know, pull up your web page now, it's going to be when it's configured to use your proxy to your local host, mm -hmm. which will then go out through your tunnel, to your virtual private server, and then since it's dynamic, it'll go out to your Facebook or whatever website you pulled up. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, um, and then it's going to come back to one yeah, yeah. dot o. Dot. Yeah, so it's, that's it's, why it's my destination. That's why it's your destination. So you can run ah, multiple ones. Yeah. I'm understanding. This cool. is awesome. Okay. Now, do I have to set up every single program on my computer to use the proxy? Well, like I said, uh, a web browser or is a great the example. Well, no. Here's the thing. A web browser is a good example because it's SOX five compliant. Uh, yeah. A lot of other programs, like for example, I think Pigeon is is uh, a, an, like a chat about, client. Uh, that can. UTorrent. Do I have to set up that one? And... Yeah, I think UTorrent can do it as well. But that's the thing is, it's a yeah. it's a thing that your client, or I'm sorry, your client, your your, your program has to be able to understand. Okay. So, in essence, it's not as beautiful as say like you know a, a VPN, which looks very similar to this yeah. in nature. Except it it becomes uh, what is known as your default gateway. <laughs> and this does not do that. Um, and there's ways to hack around that and make that work. But uh, we'll, when we get into VPNs, we'll talk about the routes and how to make this do everything. Yeah. But for right now, we're just worrying about our web connection. Yeah. 
I, uh, I totally IRC get it. Programs now. will do it. Pigeon will do it. Uh, you know, whatever programs you may have. You know, I got to be honest. Like when when I was first studying this, mm -hmm. I had no interest in it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I don't get this. I don't know why I would ever want to use this. Freaking putty, freaking proxies. I don't well, understand this well, crap. Here's, but here's, here's why now you would I get want it. to. Yeah. Here's why you would want to. Okay, so you're just hanging out at the coffee shop, as you do, right? Mm -hmm. And you yeah. know better than this, but some people might not, right? And so there's a you couple other laptops. get on the laptops. coffee shop Wi-Fi. Look at these guys. Got some laptops hanging out yeah. around here, right? And, and uh, uh-oh, what's up with this guy? <laughs> Oops, that is horrible, Darren. It's a it's a fez. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll make it a. Uh, he's got a little tassel going on, <laughs> and boom, we've got a black fez on that. Uh oh, it's a black and, fez. Yeah, we've got a hacker. Oh no, there's a <laughs> hacker in the Gibson. He's using the workload of like three users or something. I don't know. So my what. going through this SSH tunnel is going to encrypt all of my traffic so that he won't be able to steal all my passwords. Right, because you know when you're on the Wiffies. Yes. And he's on the Wiffies, specifically open ones. Yeah. Uh, he could basically use Fire Sheep or other great tools that we've talked about in the past. So if you were going to cre make your connection over to Facebook by going through your wireless LAN, so it'll go from your computer through your wireless LAN over to Facebook, mm -hmm. and the entire time this section is visible to totally him. Totally open, yeah. But if you use this, you know, he could see this this whole tunnel. But he can't it, get in the tunnel. Well, it's just garbage. Oh, okay. It's a garbage file, man. They're trashing the rights and stuff. <laughs> this is awesome. Cool. Well, I totally get it we've now. We've scribbled enough. High we've five. got a lot more yes. to cover. Let's get into some extensions yeah, here. Yeah, I want to find out how this works. In just a bit. No? We'll be back after a quick break. How do I know? How do you you guys know as well as I do that the mobile phone experience includes a lot of headache, a lot of confusion and powerlessness when the plans are just littered with hidden fees and steep penalties, stupid rules, unnecessary premiums. And you know, the bottom line is that as a consumer, you're either overpaying or being underserved. Now, Ting is a new service brought to you by some cool geeks up in Canada that bring us clarity, usability, and big savings to mobile phone users. And they've built a service based on the Sprint network so they're offering 4G Android phones to create a customer experience like no other. And the support folks are smart, passionate, and will actually empower you to solve problems. You know, not some automated phone tree, because who loves those? Most importantly, Ting has one simple plan that offers fair and honest pricing. Get this, megabytes, minutes, and text messages, each of them build separately. If you use less than you anticipated, it's no big deal. They're gonna credit you the difference at the end of the month. And if you use more, they're simply gonna bump you up to the next appropriate plan without any premiums or hidden penalties. Just head over to ting.com slash hack5 and check out their online savings calculator and you'll see why I really don't leave home without my Ting modem. You know how I feel about Wi-Fi, but seriously, this stuff is awesome for that. And they're gonna hook you up with up to $75 off your first month if you sign up at ting.com slash hack5. 